to have gone up <coughs> now the only take away in that uh, situation is that at all points of time the new order of our lives is that there is conflicting information both good and not so good coexist many interviews people ask me sir uh, how do you deal with as in not individually what does the banking industry uh, look at say the period ahead and how do you deal with uh, these uh, these sort of conflicting messages if you will and my answer to that is that i don't think any of us in the banking industry or industry particularly is too flustered by the fact that you're getting conflict we are we have now accustomed to the fact that there is going to be this chaos and you have to find order in this chaos you have to find a madness i mean method in this madness to make sure that you are the institution you are running is able to flourish and survive because the good news is the challenges for everybody is the same it's not like institution a is singled out for a greater set of problems than institution b and that applies to each of us as individuals as leaders right we operate in an environment which uh, we know has enormous pluses the demographic dividend the uh, whole uh, opportunity to grow the billion plus population the billion plus uh, opportunity we all know that it's quite remarkable we also know that there are policy paralysis there are uh, 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 infrastructural issues there are demands on uh, which are conflicting and therefore i think the mechanics of how we deal with it as individuals as institutions starts defining who would succeed who wouldn't and it is in that context at least in our journey in the bank uh, we have spent say the greater part of the last 4 years and i do visualize the period ahead would be is we should first acknowledge the fact that we are not singled out for bad treatment we are in the same space as somebody else an sbi or a federal bank or an icici or an axis or a, a large company or a small company are not singled out for bad treatment therefore the choice in front of an institution or an organization or an individual is you make the choices of how do you flourish in this environment what do you do it is easy to sit in a cabin and crib about the bad world that exists around us but what the hell i mean it's the same for everybody so somebody has to win and why can't that winner be you so we ask ourselves that question i mean repeatedly we the team in the bank uh, repeatedly talk and i'm quite pleased that in this relative i would say rough environment we probably have not done anything wrong we have come out ahead and that is i think distinguishes an institution culture and i i have to take a minute marketing plug to talk about my company right i can't get an audience of people and not talk about my own bank but i'm quite delighted that the spirit of what we have chosen to do is to stay true to the basics of what we need to do focus on execution because in in all business opportunities there are too many uh vishwamitra moments what i mean by that is there are too many temptations right the one who yields to those temptations are bound to get into a problem because you are going away from your core so the key message i have one is in the context of our bank or us as individuals is challenges are not unique to an institution it's common across the ecosystem but you choose your playing field and you choose your playing style that's message one that is from my point of view the second message is once you've chosen a playing field or a playing style stick to the core and stick to the basics particularly when the environment is choppy and we know that indian environment and in my belief even if best policies get rolled out for the next 10 15 20 years will have the kind of complexities only because that's the democracy that we are in you know the excitement of our democracy is that it will present challenges it will present conflicts it will present uh some devilish moments which a more organized environment will not because that's the that's the benefit of democracy so we have to find out how to distill from all this the essence of what we want to do and sort of lead from there since i'm seeing many young students i think my key message would be how do we uh stay enormously focused when there are so so many almost equal and competing temptations in front of us therefore the focus is crucial choosing the core is crucial sticking to the core is crucial but in this context we can't also forget one more crucial factor 
that the winner is the one who can invade better now this inherently sounds conflicting when one one side i'm saying stay true to the core stay uh, committed to the focus and yet start innovating you know yesterday when i landed in the hyderabad airport and this is a you may think it's a s- silly example uh, but i thought i must uh, share the simple things that innovation means if anybody has uh, visited the sorry the ladies don't get offended but the men's uh, washroom in the in in the airport often when you go to the washroom you look to figure out where to keep your mobile and your bag and all that stuff for the first time i saw in the in the washroom above the urinals they put a glass plank to keep your mobile phones or whatever things that you typically have in your hand now it struck me as wow it's so simple why didn't it occur to anybody it's happened in the hyderabad airport and i been fortunate to travel many parts of the country i haven't seen anywhere anywhere this kind of physical convenience which just makes that moment of irritation into a into a great uh, physical comfort now any if you flown indigo airlines and i'm not a sales person for indigo airlines but if you flown indigo airlines there are two things that strike you in indigo airlines and they are not in the aircraft they are outside the aircraft one when you board the bus to get into an indigo aircraft they are the only one who have a a flexible step which means typically when we all get into the bus we have to put our foot up and go like this many of us particularly the elderly or middle aged indian women are slightly on the higher side struggle to climb they are the only one who put a layer below which is a flexible it can when the bus takes off it goes back up so it's easier to climb onto the aircraft they are the only one who have a ramp to go up you know everybody have to climb stairs now these are not complex to do these are not uh, too uh what shall i say some rocket science in- innovations forget mangalyaan and all those great stuff that india does just the little stuff that you do distinguishes the brand therefore going back to my initial uh, points is choose the playing field aware of the ecosystem being same stick to the core try and avoid distractions or in uh, attractions which are i call attractive distractions try to keep away from them and importantly figure out those little process innovations which starts distinguishing an individual or an institution if today the md of a bank is standing and talking about indigo airlines or the hyderabad airport they have not paid me to do advertising but i am advertising for them i am sure all of you will remember this that's brand building and each of you is a brand everybody whether it's a professor or a student we are all brands and we are all products in the marketplace how do we distinguish ourselves comes by those little quality edges and those little finesse that we bring which distinguishes us i can go on but i would encourage you to ask me questions if you wish to uh, any any area Second is the need. Forget two percent, one percent, one and a half percent, two and a half percent is matter of ability or affordability. Conceptually, nobody can argue that we need to be doing. We are all part of a society, so participating in the development of society is both <coughs> mandatory from a point of view of social conscience and importantly for your own institutional development. If you don't develop the environment that you are in, you are not going to be able to survive. so i have no disagreement or quarrel with the fact that we need to invest in society uh, in whatever fashion uh, sometimes it becomes a checklist you know people say that <coughs> we uh, we do that because we get advertising mileage or we give a something we get a photo opportunity so those are more the 
branding exercise. I'm not too fussed by it. It's important, but it's not. So the need for it is must. Now, the point that you mentioned is that somebody is seeking for commercial reasons. Don't force it. <coughs> it's a, it's a, it is a fact, particularly public sector banks in India are starved for capital. There are some real and genuine issues of NPS being high and, uh, uh, and uh, prospective uh, capital increase requirements are there. So it's a matter of only <coughs> should it be two or should it be one or should it be delayed by a year. So those are just milestone deferrals. It is not a conceptual disagreement. So I don't think anybody is like, I mean, again, uh, as a bank, uh, federal and even me personally, we over invest in it. And, uh, this year, <coughs> the 2 percent, whatever we need to do, we will certainly do. By the fact that we were for long a largely a one region player in that state where we were founded, we spend more than 8 percent of the CSR of the state is by one institution which is federal bank. Right? And, and I take no credit, it's just the institution has evolved like that. But in the last four years that I've been there, we choose 18th October, which is the bank's founder's day, as a very crucial day where we kick off each year's various things. I mean, the, yesterday before I left, we, uh, we, we kicked off a few things and we go back 18th, we have a big annual day. This year, for example, every branch, and we have now 1,215 branches in the country, every branch has adopted a school, <coughs> an un relatively underprivileged school in and around their area. And it's not just go and give a water purifier that we will do, but that school's development is now in the KPI of my branch manager. Teaching, training, upgrading the children's lives and across time, sanitation, health, hygiene, and try to, of course, look at a business potential, look at things that we can do with that school. I mean, I won't lie saying that we must marry the commercial need and the social need. They, and you don't have to divorce the two, you don't have to hide behind anything. But as long as the social development is genuine, real, good, and helps the society, I don't think we should shy away from it. And we encourage that in the bank, and I don't think anybody is hugely opposed to it. Timeline could be a challenge, particularly because public sector banks are really in a jam. And it's not their fault, they are in a jam. And the environment being what it is, the NPA is a problem for country. But, uh, so that's what I would say. My question is, uh, as per the reports of RBI, are the banks, uh, are banks required to adopt the three norms up to by the year 2019, which would cost them around 200 billion? Is it an appropriate financial measure by the banking industry to follow the system? You must understand what Basel III's core principles are. It was born out of a crisis time when the capital held by institutions was not appeared to be enough to make sure that the investors and shareholders and customers are protected, right? That is the core of what we are trying to do. So the level of severity, unfortunately in the world, when the horse is bolted is when all the actions start. So Basel III in some fashion seeks to address in advance some of these things, but any Corrective measure sometimes goes to the punitive side, gets to be excessive. So then combined with that, India being relatively more conservative in everything they do, the RBI, we overlay on top of that a few more features. So what happens is the cost of regulation is dramatically increasing, right? But again, these are all, you can't argue whether these are right or wrong. They, I mean, if somebody says, boss, as a shareholder, as an investor, protect my investment, they're right. By the time you all graduate and uh, become more seasoned bankers, there will be Basel 4 and Basel 5, right? Because this is an ev evolution. In Basel 3, they are calculating holding capital for operations risk, which is a bigger driver than credit risk. So you are going to find the need to carry capital in increase. And can you argue that operations risk is important? I think it is. But what it also has as a subtext as you improve your practices and as your data quality improves and your confirmation to all that improves, your cost of capital can come down if your self-assurance is strong. So there are, there are mitigants, but the initial blow is going to be there. But I can tell you that before long Basel 4 will come, which will be tougher than Basel 3. This is a fact. Sir, why is that 
all the banks of four percent, all the participating banks, of about four percent interest rate on savings. Then they can increase the offering on the savings account because there is no and the largest debt is there. Two private sector banks may put up three hundred and fifty and they are giving more than four percent. That is very interesting. Do you want to become a banker? <laughs> I will become a banker. I am telling you, two years from now, you will stand in the same podium and argue why is it not 3%. <laughs> See, everything is a commercial decision. It has to be done for the good of your institution. The customer wants a rate of return which is higher, he has to lock his money longer. There are fixed deposit products. Right? So, savings product is a transaction product. A transaction product has costs associated with it. In fact, I am arguing why 4%, why not 2%? So, and why some banks have gone to 5 or 6 is again a commercial decision because their base is low. They want to grow. So you are trying to buy share. For example, Karnataka Bank went up to 5.5, quickly rolled back to 4.5. You would have seen yesterday, Indusind Bank has rolled back from 5.5 to 4. .5. Why? Because they have started building scale. So these are all, pricing is a commercial decision. Never con confuse pricing issue to a social issue. Right? I am telling you, one day you become a general manager of a product in a bank, you will stand and argue saying, sir, you should be free. Zero. <laughs> zero. I have 500 francs, euros, you know, in the French. They will be charging you. Now, it is just 510 euro after six, 10 years. Correct. <coughs> Again, this goes to like the CSR question. These are all must-dos. You cannot escape uh, in a country like ours, which is so layered. I mean, you have the Mr. Ambani, who has like disproportionately all of our money put together, multiplied by many times is Mr. Ambani's wealth. And then there is that <coughs> lowest end of the market sitting in the remotest corner of money, India, who doesn't have money or who doesn't have an investment capability. So both exist. That is why India is so fat fascinating and attractive and all the good things that are spoken about India. So we need to address various layers of the market. So financial inclusion when it becomes a <coughs> governmental theme or a regulatory theme, it forces a behavior. Otherwise it becomes a lip service. So in the last three months after Mr. Modi demanded seven and a half crore accounts, they say five and a half crore. I'll discount it because some two crore, three crore must be good. All you know, people with second accounts and all that stuff. But nevertheless, at least two, three crores are new. So you've brought in three more crore of customers into the fold of banking, which is fascinating. <coughs> now, these are important, not for today. But if we are talking of a developing nation and a larger customer profile, they have to come into mainstream. So financial inclusion has implications beyond just social need but a commercial need to. In fact, I remember when the first time I met uh, the earlier governor, Mr. Subarao, he told me, please don't treat this as a uh, social compulsion, but treat it as a commercial opportunity. Then you will do it differently. Think of how you can in get people, not as an obligation, but as a commercial opportunity.